You're listening to Masala Chai. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Masala Chai with me. And today I have a guest with me. His name is Halcyon. He's my pal, a uh, really good friend for a long, long time. And he was very helpful and uh, he was really, you know, he was, he was quite interested to join us today in this podcast. Um, so yeah, here we, here we go. We have him joining us right now. I would like to also point out that there is a chance that you will experience a, a difference in quality mainly because i'm using a different software to record how see inside of view so um this will eventually be different in in a, in future podcasts but as of now uh this is the best i can do so please uh you know just <laughs> i hope you guys understand anyways without further ado enjoy what's up how hello yes so how's in here <laughs> he's a he's a man who's oh. hard to uh, is hard to reach huh? i've been trying to get yes. this guy <laughs> for like uh, how many weeks bro jesus five well. yeah yeah five Ten. weeks five a while yeah, yeah. it's it, for a long ass time essentially the reason why I, I i want him is because uh kevin and i a friend of mine kevin we used to do this podcast uh during during the lockdown conversations with the boys casual plug-in and uh, hal sure. was our like regular regular uh, guest at that point he's not even a guest yeah. anymore he's pretty I'm... much he's pretty much a host because he's always there um but uh, the thing is we have a lot of good conversations with uh with, with Halcyon over here. He's a very he's a very smart individual, has a lot of uh, insightful comments to to make. And uh, I thought that would be uh, that would make this podcast a bit more interesting. Don't you agree? Yes, very flattering. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. We have a history for our uh, non-homosexual uh, uh relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Halcyon is in Indonesia right now. You are, yes, uh, although, so. although you are in the University of Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, that's kind of uh, an interesting thing. He's still in Indonesia. He can't, he can't go to the Australia yet, unfortunately, due due to the coronas. But, uh, but yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, yep. so Hal, I I wanted to discuss about religion because mm -hmm. i think it's it's a common factor with us i mean you personally i can tell you've had like a, a really big breakthrough with religion at a certain aspect of your life mm -hmm. um that that's something i know personally i'm not sure if you're you know willing to open up as a book mm -hmm. and explain and go more onto that um because that, that's All your right. choice but but I, I wanted to you know discuss this because it's because we're both we're both catholics and uh, yes. that, that's something that I wanted to talk about. Yes. Yeah. You, you want to explain a bit, a bit about uh, your, your current spiritual journey? My current spiritual journey. All right. So I was uh, born into a Islamic household. And uh, I was raised as a very devout uh, Muslim. But as I grew older into my teenage years especially with uh with how a lot of people in my generation can relate we sort of had a lot of questions and i had a lot of questions that were left unanswered so uh, i drifted into sort of atheism and agnosticism and then i encountered a church this was initially a Protestant church and I still had a lot of questions, but I, I met people which, you know, essentially changed my life and changed my life for, for the better. Mm. They made me want to be better. So emotionally I was in a very good place at that Protestant church, but I had a lot of, still had a lot of questions, you know, which I think our, our generation as a whole struggle with. Mm -hmm. So after that, I did my own research uh, more towards the resurrection of Christ and just the whole history of Christianity. And eventually I came to the understanding or the conclusion that uh, it would be best for me to go to, into the Catholic Church. And that's mm -hmm. what I did right. about two years ago. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean that's that's honestly a very very inspiring story because I mean I'm not saying that because I'm not biased because I'm Catholic. Oh, I should be, yeah. but <laughs> yes. but I'm only saying this because like it's quite an interesting journey. It's not easy for for you know someone who's who's been raised as 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 a Muslim, especially in in such a in, in a culture in a country that's filled with with uh, cultural norms, with taboo, with with the acceptance yeah. of the society in general. For uh-huh. for you to come, you know, to go past that, and to to stand up and say, you know what, I I want to be more. I want to be, I want to be who I want to be. You know, you want to be a bit more free with with the options you have. That that's that's truly inspiring. And I may have not said this to you, but I I really am proud of you. And I really am Thank like you. like I really have seen such immense growth as a person. And I think religion does have somewhat of an effect to a person's uh, character or personality. What, yeah. what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what our generation was raised with was sort of the idea that religion is outdated. And in many ways, you know, there's a case for that. And, you know, I, as I, as I grew older into my uh, teenage years around when I was 13, a lot of the media coverage around religion was uh, some sort of thing where it was indoctrinating people mm-hmm. and it gave uh, people some sort of bad virtues, sorry, vices or, you know, bad personality traits. So in essence, I think religion can definitely shape someone's character, whether that be good or bad. It's dependent upon the, in my opinion, it's dependent upon the uh, fundamental ideas of the religion itself but yeah it's definitely i would say the the center of almost everybody's lives back then and i still think now uh I'll, if you don't call it religion you i'd say you call it like a belief system and mm, yeah at the end of the day that's probably the core of everybody's lives and it's what shape our decisions um you know day to day so yeah i think it's definitely incredibly important to us yeah, I mean, an interesting point that I was thinking about the other day was was the fact that you know we we use religion as as a form of like uh, a form of way to to explain things that we don't understand. For instance, there's yeah. science, and science tends to explain a few things that we are able to control. Uh, we have some form of of uh, of an explanation for it. But when, when when it comes to stuff like you know what what caused the Big Bang theory or not Big Bang theory not the show what what caused the Big Bang <laughs> or or something that goes beyond um, out of out of our reach or out of our current uh, ability to to be able to comprehend that level I think the the most common thing that we do is we resort to uh, to religion where where a lot of you know I mean different religions have different. Um, explanations for it yeah you know i mean obviously christianity has you know the god created everything the seven days and and we have yeah. that entire the genesis going on uh, and a lot of other religions do the same thing as well in in a, in a similar fashion i mean it goes back all the way to greek mythology and the way that they have a, a, a specific um god i guess or a person who takes yeah. over that like sun water and all yeah. that um it, what, what do you think about it well, obviously people back then like i mean like thousands of years ago would have had some form of a system to want to like just help themselves yeah. believe what they can't yeah. understand yeah yeah i think i think religion answers a lot of questions or gives answers to a lot of questions that we have for which we don't know already obviously some some people can uh, be indoctrinated into having answers which you know are like incredibly wrong but at the same time what religion tries to do is um definitely give a frame or some sort of perspective on the unknown Mm -hmm. you know i think that's the whole that's the whole experience but that's the whole religious experience for all of us is trying to comprehend or trying to understand the unknown through the through the lens of of God, and essentially that is what uh, I think, especially in the Catholic Church or Christianity, what God sort of symbolizes. God definitely symbolizes the unknown, 
And that's sort of why we worship a creator and why we are creation simply because we are lesser we're we're humans and as smart as we will ever be whether that be with artificial intelligence in the future at the end of the day we're limited and because of that limitation maybe it's because we're anxious or we have many worries or maybe it's just by our own curiosity we need to cling to that idea of uh being able to in some way grasp the unknown and that's sort of what religion helps us to do to grasp with things we don't know now in the past um i think most people relied on religion because it was they it answered it gave answers to questions so large that you know it was really hard to oppose it and right right there was no now, point yeah. there was no point going against it but i feel like now yeah. we just have a generation that's so prone to to asking questions yeah that we were more concerned or well i wouldn't say concerned more more curious than we were than we ever were which yeah, is probably exactly. why yeah. there's been an incredibly fast uh uh fast growth in, in technology a rise in development mm -hmm. because of that yeah. curiosity but i feel like i mean you, you you did say you did mention and it's quite similar to what i just said the fact that our generation is is more curious but i've seen that in my experience i have met more people who are atheists than 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 mm. uh any than, than they believe any form of religion yeah. i mean like in school we obviously had like a group of people who are christians muslims mm. maybe yeah. even hindus at some point i've never seen but yeah. there's always one group which is known to be atheists right yeah and even here in in the army <clears throat> i've met a lot of people who who kind of fall into that category or into another category where they're unsure you know they, they're like uh maybe i don't know i haven't decided yeah well yeah i think that that's definitely true and in my point of view i think technology and the freedom that's been brought by, you know, our economic success from, you know, the all the way from the industrial revolution up to now has in some way reduced the need for God in some sense. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I just had a conversation with um, a priest recently and we, we talked about this, how my our age now especially our generation we have a lot of questions but at the same time what we see is that we live in a time where that's essentially this is this has been the best time to live uh ever in the history of humanity <laughs> yeah we yeah, we've that. never had so much we've never had so much access to everything mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we're the happiest in in many sense in in many senses we're we're actually the least happy but what I am saying is that we definitely have access to the most things that we've ever had, especially with the internet and uh, with our economic systems. But what I was talking about with the priests was that um, it's funny how since we've gotten economic success, it it sort of replaced our whole need for uh, religion in the sense that religion seems more of a limitation to our lives now oh. a lot a lot of people when yeah. they when they see a lot of people's criticisms with christianity and religion as a whole is not so much that uh they don't agree with the beliefs uh, well generally a lot of the developed countries they're they're built upon a lot of these judeo-christian or abrahamic values but the one thing that they they don't like is that they they don't see the path of obedience or the general need the objective need to do things that you don't like that religion says you have to do oh right so um, practices I, I think, and traditional yeah uh yeah they yeah. they i think i think our our uh generation definitely likes you know certain beliefs that's i think that's why a lot of us or especially the west they've gone towards eastern 
uh, religions like mm-hmm. Buddhism because they they have more of an emphasis with uh, inner practices than outer practices right, and trying right. to change change other people's opinions, which is almost the exact opposite of what Christianity is trying to do. You yeah, know, yeah, evangelize. Yeah. I mean, p- perhaps so, it's the freedom that we we enjoy as as you know as a person who, who doesn't practice any religion and then having to go to a religion where they're kind of limited to their mm-hmm. to their rules to their yeah. uh, to their practices and yeah. you're expected to follow that or you're like oh mm-hmm. you, this guy's not a good christian he's he claims yeah. he's a christian but he doesn't go to church every sunday he doesn't do this yeah. he doesn't do that so there's that limitation there i think that's what people are a bit more well perhaps concerned about compared to yeah. to not having a complete belief in in god because at that point they cannot say they're christians because they don't go to church every sunday but yeah. at the same time they might not go to church but they might think oh jesus is alive and he, he's our god he might he they might have that opinion that that belief but according to our community they're not considered as a proper christian yeah yeah well I think I think a good way to look at it is that largely because of our economic uh, success with with all the systems that we've used and how we've had so much world peace lately, mm-hmm. like in comparison to the history of humanity. It, back then, you could say that uh, religion, in exchange for in exchange for doing things that you don't want to do you're you're given the chance of heaven yeah in the sense that what you see is that in reality especially without economic success and i think this is largely why the poor i think i think i'm not sure but i think amongst poor countries religion is growing actually Mm -hmm. and religion is still a big theme and that's because religion provides them the you know, opportunity for heaven in this world where they think everything is hell in this world. Mm-hmm, yeah. And that's why they're willing to exchange, you know, some short-term uh, gratification in the hope of long-term gratification. But with the Western world is that our our lives are generally, you know, in materialistic terms, amazing. And what they're seeing is that we already have a heaven on earth so in their point of view, they don't see it as a fair or a good trade-off where, you know, if they want to follow religion, they won't, they don't think the heaven that is necessarily afforded uh, or offered by religions like Christianity or religions like Islam or Judaism is necessarily worth it because right. they think, you know, the materialistic world or what we've had already is way better than what you know, religion seem to offer. And that's probably because they, they see, they see it that the trade, the trade off between freedom and religion is not as fair as it used to be, I think. Okay. But obviously, I think, I think, I think that point of view, the that I just described is not a good point of view as a whole. But I I think that's definitely a justification of why people are, are choosing to leave uh, religion, and go into this world without you know, some sort of nihilism. Perhaps, perhaps. I mean, I mean, it, it, you certainly make a, a good point. And, and I like the one thing you said about uh, heaven on earth and, and that entire idea that that there is afterlife, you know? Yeah. There, there's something that I, I read was quite interesting. Um, it's it's that actually in reality earth is is hell <laughs> because yeah. of all the the disorder that's going around with even though there's good stuff going on but there's always the, uh, the other extreme which is there's always yeah. the worst of things go- happening around in the world as well yeah. so perhaps we're living in hell right now maybe we've all died and we're never now in hell well <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about because that's an interesting concept that i actually thought uh, maybe yeah. the, the person was joking i saw this on mind gag of any of any other yeah. places but yeah. it, it really did provoke a thought in me because i was mm-hmm. like th- he has a point hell doesn't have to be that that fiery place that the devil is sending there and like lucifer you know it doesn't have to be like that it, it could just be a place where you're tormented where you're forced to, yeah. to you know live with your own sins and 
that seems to be like what we're living in right now. It was an interesting concept that I, that I thought of. What what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I think I think the world we live in has hints of what we would think hell should be, and it also has hints of what we think heaven should be. Mm. I think there's I think that's why religion as a whole sees earth sort of in the middle where yeah, midgard it has it has good things yeah it has good things and it has uh bad things and i think yeah. you could definitely say that uh you could you could see this world as you know hell and it sort of goes back to my point where i guess a lot of people are living are leaving religion because in the west you're sort of immune to um that sense of or at least disconnected from poverty from severe yeah, yeah. hunger from you know infant mortality and and from you know incredibly terrible things which is you know it's good that they're away from suffering but i think that's probably a huge reason why they're leaving religion behind well i, I think there's a difference between you know being away from suffering and being aware of suffering right because exactly, yeah. when, when it comes to like you and me we've we've, we've been brought up in a country when we've grown up in a country where we've been given all the opportunities people in the west would have been given while having given the exposure that every other person who doesn't have the privilege that we have been given uh would would be able to be exposed of you know so we've yeah. seen we've seen poverty Definitely. we've seen i mean we've seen everything that that can go wrong at the same time we've also seen everything that can go right so yeah. like you mentioned we're kind of in the middle there which which i think is kind of the reason why and probably what affected your decision to to shift religions or or to find out what what really mattered to you no mm. yeah i think uh well personally one of the reasons that uh religion has always been a <clears throat> you know religion has always been important to me and one of the reasons is that I had a lot of, you know, fundamental and deep questions that science as a whole cannot uh, answer. And if they do answer, you know, like the, the let's say, the idea of suffering mm. and the idea of pain, you know, science sort of answers it as though it's a, either a chemical imbalance or just a reality of life and you have to uh, accept that. And I think that was something that didn't satisfy me. You could say that ignorance is bliss, but at the same time, I think uh, just fundamentally, I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's one of the reasons why I spent a lot of time uh, searching for religion. And I, I still think a lot of us do this because as a whole, we want to, we want to know how to cope with reality. We want to know how to cope with uh, suffering, whether that be physical or mentally. Uh, we want to know how to cope with uh, not getting what we want all the time yeah. and seemingly not being in heaven or not not being satisfied all the time. And that's sort of one of the reasons why I went into religion. That's not the reason why I switched religions, but it's definitely the the reason why I kept religion close to my heart even when I was drifting from religion to another. Okay, that that seems to satisfy me. That's a satisfaction. That is a satisfactory yeah. answer right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Yeah. I, I. Okay. So this is, this has been great because I feel like it's something that we do need to discuss, and I feel like a lot of people who who might listen to this eventually will be like, this is kind of a, a a uh, a topic that's a bit, you know, someone's walking in. It's my it's my brother. Hi. Is this is a topic that's obviously not always spoken of because it's kind of like something people think of as as uh, as taboo, especially in our countries, because we're forced to to believe that that what we're given, what we're born with, is what we're gonna have to stick with for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. for us to come down here and and have that conversation is something that I think is is worth uh, worth worth talking about. And so for that, I thank you very much, Halcyon. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you thank for you very having much. me. Yeah, and my brother yeah. also. He was a great, great cameo down here. Might have yes, him as a guest great. next time. Yeah. Okay, incredibly next time. Incredibly profound. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, incredibly profound. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry that our podcast is quite short, but that's the entire entire idea of it. Uh, next time, yes. 
when I have you over, which I will, we'll talk about something mm. that uh, might 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 pick our brains a bit more. Mm. Well, I'm I'm used to short, so. <laughs> 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 nice, I was, nice. I was talking about. I was talking about my height. Right, right. Of course, of course. Don't, don't what else? Funny, what else? Get, yeah, don't get any other funny, funny ideas. ideas. Right. About okay. My, my height. All right. Yeah. Okay. Then. All right. With that said, yeah. guys, thank you so much for joining uh, me and Halcyon here today on this amazing episode of Masala Chai. As always, please stay safe. Have an amazing day, and uh, and 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 I guess go have a a cup of masala chai. Peace yes. Out.